Yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome to the On This Date in MOB podcast, episode number 29. But it should have been about, like, what, 31, 32 already, bro? Yes, sir. We uh, <laughs> took a two-week break there. Yeah, I took a two-week break. Um, fortunately, I was out of town doing work, so that was whack, to say the least. But um, Kevin and I were talking about it just before we hit record. You know, it feels good to be getting back on here and just... Um, I'm really happy to be back, and I know Kevin is happy to be recording, too, talking some baseball. Uh, what's up, bro? How you been these past two weeks? How's the season treating you? How's your fantasy team? Uh, good, bro. So it was a roller coaster of emotion this uh, past this past uh, weekend, uh, Sunday into Monday, because I, I thought I had won my fantasy matchup by six points. And then I woke up Monday, and it told me I lost by, by four. And then I woke up Tuesday, and the stack correct the stack corrections ended up giving me a win by one point. So that was that, that was kind of interesting. Uh, they put me up at four and one, so the group chat kind of blew up on that one. But uh, yeah, bro, excited to be talking baseball with you again. That that two week uh, two week hiatus felt like forever, but uh, excited to get back at it with you, brother. Yeah, likewise, bro. Likewise. Um, so today is gonna be another typical show. We're gonna do three features. We're gonna cover some news, some reactions to the. Uh, things going on around the league and then we will finish off with a sporkle quiz um, but before we get cracking uh just make sure you check out all the links down below um like this video subscribe to this channel and most importantly go check out the instagram that's where we are most active we post anywhere from four to ten times a day we are in full swing in season mode um yesterday we put up a post about Jose Canseco leaving Madonna's apartment in the early hours of the morning. So, you know, it's lit over there. Having some fun posts going up. Yes, and sir. Um, yeah, that link will be down below. Make sure you go check it out. We also have a YouTube we've, uh, where we just post one fact a day, one short per day. Um, that link will be down below. Um, and yeah, anything important will be down below. So without further ado, would you like to take the lead, Kevin? Yes, sir. Just real quick, that Jose Canseco post that you that you just mentioned, it's got a thousand likes. Well, we usually average around like 300 likes on those pictures. Yeah. And so that one that one's popping, bro. That was a good one. So make sure you guys yeah. head over and, and peep that. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, the first first feature we got for this week is uh, our boy Ricky Henderson uh, becoming the all time stolen base leader. This is from May 1st, 1991. Uh, he literally steals a record. He passes Lou Brock as the all time stolen base leader with swipe number 939. Uh, he steals third base against a battery combo with pitcher team, Tim Leary and catcher Matt Noakes against his former team, the Yankees. And uh, he actually got caught stealing in the first inning, so Ricky was a little human. Uh, he will finish his 25-year career with 1,406 stolen bases. That was out of uh, 1,741 attempts. So he caught, he got caught stealing 335 times. Mm -hmm. um and uh he kind of had a little had a little ceremony i don't i wouldn't even call it a ceremony after he stole the base they, they stopped the game for like five minutes and uh he delivered one of the probably one of the greatest quotes of all time uh kind of said lou brock was a, a great base stealer but today i'm i am the greatest of all time so that that gave us one of the, the greater moments of uh baseball history right there uh, just real quick, I want to throw this at you, bro. So he was actually drafted uh, in the fourth round of the 1976 draft out of high school, out of Oakland Technical High School. Mm -hmm. And he didn't debut until June 24, 1979. So he spent roughly three seasons in the minors, and he stole 249 stolen bases down there. So imagine... What? Exactly. So not only did he have 1,400 up in the majors, so... Could have had another 250 if he didn't spend three years in the minors, right? That's crazy, bro. I didn't know that set. Yeah, bro, that, that, that was interesting. So uh, you want to get into some some of his uh, league-leading stats, bro? Yeah, so um, like Kevin said, he was uh, drafted in 76, but he didn't um, make his debut until when? 79, if I'm not 79, mistaken? 79, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, he led the league in... Several seasons. Um, let me just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 12 times he led the league. Um, and in 1982 is when he had the most stolen bases in a single season. If you want to take a wild guess, if you don't have the numbers in front uh, of you, 
I did. I did look it up. It was one thirty because yeah. that's the uh, that's yeah. all time. That's a modern record for steals in a season, right? Yeah. Um, and it's funny because now with the bigger bases and the way the game's kind of rolling, they're talking about eighty stolen bases being in the in the in the in the vicinity for some of these hitters, mm. uh, base stealers. Anyway, he stole a hundred bases in a single season three different times. Um, he stole ninety three bases in eighty eight. Uh, and just, I, just 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 real quick, bro. Sorry to cut you off. No, you're good. You're good. So so imagine they had bigger bases back then, bro. 130 bases, you could probably steal 160, right? <laughs> bro, <laughs> it's just wild, dude. I'm still tripping on the 200 stolen bases in the minors, bro. <laughs> like, God damn. He was probably running all over these motherfuckers in the minors. Hell bro. yeah, bro. Hell yeah. Um so the least amount of stolen bases he had in a single season was, um, and by no surprise, in 03. He was 44 years old. He stole three. Um, but he, out of his, um, where's, his where's his career at? Uh, 25 seasons in the league. He's only stole under 20 bases four times. So um, 21 years, he stole over 20 bases, bro, which is mind blowing to think about and that's how you get to the all-time leading numbers that's crazy bro yeah um so now before i toss it back to you real quick just share a couple um cool facts that we found on the world wide web this is from a cool website called 80s baseball you guys should go check it out um here's one of the facts i read from there from 1970 through 1989 ricky stole 283 more bases than anyone in baseball but the catch is that he didn't make his debut until 1979. Despite giving the rest of baseball more than an eight-year head start, Ricky stole more bases than anyone for the period from 1970 to 1989. So he he basically came back and revolutionized, you know, like the stolen bases and all that. That's, um, that's crazy. In the 80s, he stole 8 838 bases, which is more than the leader for the 30s, 40s, and 50s uh, combined more than 100 bases. Um, and one more, just a cool one right here. Ricky stole 33 bases in July of 1983, which is, uh, he stole 108 bases that whole season. And how many times do you think he was thrown out, bro? Since you were bringing up how many times he was thrown out and all that. In, in, that, that in the month of July, month of July, 1983, 33 stolen bases. 33, I'm going to go with three. He was he was thrown out once, bro. Damn, what a <laughs> month, bro! Impeccable, bro. Damn, the hottest month too, bro. I, I was just gonna you. say exactly thirty three out of how many games? I wonder. That's probably because he probably wasn't playing every day. There's probably a couple of days off in July. What do you reckon? Well, like 28, 28 games, maybe not even twenty five. Yeah, you're right. Um, Damn, he was he was he was. He was Taking multiple bags a day is what I'm trying to say. No, yeah, yeah, I got you, I got you. Um, but yeah, so I'll toss that right back over to you. Uh, that's amazing. So he he led his league, uh, American League, twelve times in the, in his career, like you mentioned, and that that's an all time record. Um, he he started off with a good streak starting in 1981, 1980. No, yeah, 1980. The his first full full year in the league, and he led the league until 1986. In 1987, he got injured, so he didn't lead the lead the league. Um, Harold Reynolds Harold Reynolds uh, ended up taking the the stolen base title that that year. And uh, I have a quote for you, bro. So he Henderson actually gave him a ring. He gave him a call, and he said, "The, the uh, so Reynolds answered. He said Henderson here. He said, and uh, Reynolds said, "Hey, what's going on, Ricky? I think he's calling to congratulate me." But he goes, 60 stolen bases." You ought to be ashamed. Ricky would have had 60 at the break, and then he hung up. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. So, so he was that dude, man. And then, uh, of course, right after that year, he, he kept he went back to leading the leading the league. Um, in addition to the to being the all time leader in uh, in stolen bases, he's all he's also the all time leader in runs scored with 2,295. Mm. He's the all time leader with uh, lead off home runs with 81. The next is Soriano, Alfonso Soriano with 54. So just uh, just another big ass gap between him and the second place uh, second place guy, because uh, <clears throat> the gap in between stolen bases between Henderson and uh, Lou Brock is the same as the gap between Brock and the 47th place. 
guy on the stolen base list. That's wild, bro. Yeah, That's bro. Wild. So just not like not only is it first, but you're just blowing guys out of the water, bro. Uh so got some more fun, fun facts for you real quick. If you if you penalize Henderson for every time he got caught, those 335 stolen bases, if you take those bags away, like subtract 335 stolen bases and took away his 130 steals from 1982, he's still the all-time leader. Um, you could have a guy, you could have had a guy debut uh, this past opening day on 2023, steal 50 bases every year for 28 years, and he still wouldn't catch up to Ricky. Um, Damn, bro. That's, is that record ever going to be touched? As, as, uh, I have a question for you right now. No, I have a follow-up question for you right now, but no, I'm, I'm going to say no, never. Um, last one for you here, bro. Henderson uh, nearly ran a marathon in his career just stealing bases. The 1406 stolen bases and 90 feet between bases adds up to 1,206. Oh, hold on, excuse me. I butchered that, butchered that number. 126,000. 540,000 feet. No, I don't know how to read, bro. <laughs> it was uh, 23.97 miles. So two miles Damn, short of a marathon. Bro. Two miles short of a marathon is what I'm trying to say. But I don't know how to read numbers, bro. So <laughs> <laughs> apologize no, you're that. Good. You're good, you're good. So uh, all-time active stolen base leaders, bro, would you take a wild guess who's uh, who's uh, threatening, uh, not even threatening, I should say, Who's the all-time stolen base leader, active stolen base leader? Right I'll now. Give you, right. I'll give you the number, the number of stolen bases, 340. 340, and we are – give me a hint, AL or NL? AL, AL. He spent his AL. entire career in the AL. He's on his third team, I want to say. Third team, damn. Third um, team. Uh, let, me, let me go confirm that real quick, bro. I don't want to no. – Who's a speedster, bro? Yeah, wow. third team. Can you think, bro? Thirteen. When did he debut? He's oh, been like 15, 15 years in the league. He's thirty four years old. Debuted in two thousand nine. Uh, think middle infield, bro. Middle infield. He's in the <clears throat> AL. Fifteen seasons. Hold up, give me a little more, but not, not a hint. Just give me a little more time. Hold up, I'm going through all the teams right now. Um, he has to be... Damn, bro. No, I, I'm not going to front, bro. Ooh. Um, Elvis Andrews, 340. Ah, bro. Damn. You should have known that one, bro. Bro, I'm tripping, too, on the simple fact that... Um, I was watching the White Sox game a couple days ago, and they were talking about how he's been in the league for a minute now. Yeah, bro, 15 and years. I couldn't yeah. believe it. <laughs> I couldn't I'm believe still it. tripping on that. Me yeah. neither, bro. And then uh, we got Billy Hamilton. He's not even playing anymore, right? Billy Hamilton, he's got 326. And third place, bro, this one, I, I just have to throw this at you, bro. You'll never guess this ever in your life. Uh, Starling Marte has 323 stolen bases. How old is he? 30 something already. He's huh? 34, bro. He's been in the league wow. 12 years. Damn. I can't, I can't believe that. Like, how? And those, <laughs> damn, bro. And those seasons, those top three seasons, 80, 83, and 82, Henderson has uh, more stolen bases than I think all of them. Cause that's a, yeah, bro. Exactly. 338 bases. I yeah, don't know. Bro, so, so to, to answer your question, no, this this record is untouchable, bro. Not only maybe is that record untouchable, old. like maybe I, when we're like eighty, you know. <laughs> I doubt it, bro. But I don't, I don't know, man. Even one hundred thirty, you think that will ever get touched in a single season? Ah, oh, bro, it has to be some <laughs> wild ass motherfucker to come through. And the thing too, bro, is like um, going back to that phone call that he had with Harold Reynolds. Mm -hmm. I had known about that because I watched a really cool documentary about Henderson and how he was misunderstood because a lot mm -hmm. of the media, you know, they kind of called him arrogant and like things like yeah, that. Cocky, selfish. Yeah. He, he but was I think dude, to get to, yeah. But I think to get to those numbers, you have to be a certain level of like confident, bro. Yeah. And it may come off as cocky, arrogant, whatever, but like you have to have some 
like 130 stolen bases, bro. Like, yeah, bro. You have to you have to walk the walk and you have to talk the talk, bro. Yeah, he's you and you better be about get it, you know? those bases, bro. Exactly. Now they're gonna be sitting your ass, bro. They're not gonna start exactly. you. On top of that, bro, real quick. I'm sorry, but um, <laughs> 297 home runs, 3,000 hits. This guy fucking did it all, bro. He was a he was a he like exactly. He, he couldn't just steal. He was a power hitter, bro. Like he was a he was. He was a legit power hitter, bro. He could go deep when he wanted to. I'm just tripping, bro. This guy nah, was, was incredible, man. He was that. He was that dude, man. He was that dude. Uh, well, it would have been great to to see him play, you know. And yeah, then well, and then well, it was crazy. It was kind of crazy how he bounced around and like had like twelve different teams, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> a lot of teams. A lot of them were one year stints, one year with the so- Red Sox. But, but he was Dodgers. But he was successful everywhere he went, bro. Him and it and those teams that he played in. Yeah, but obviously he with the A's he was the. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, and then going back to that documentary real quick, when he went to go play with the Yankees, I remember um, there was a piece of it where he, they talked about him getting like a, a like this dope ass apartment or condo, bro. That was like, I don't know, bro. It was like some crazy shit, but that like he would. He would take his car to like the stadium, even though he was like really close, like <laughs> <laughs> like some crazy like. Oh yeah, oh, bro. I I, I, had, I did read uh, a little bit that he kind of he kind of helped uh, relax the uh, the clubhouse. He kind of he kind of helped transform that clubhouse. Yeah, I had to, I saw that documentary a while ago, bro. So I really wish I could have like recall a lot of the cool piece, pieces of that documentary. But um, if you, just if look you it up on that- YouTube. Okay, I was going to say, if you remember the name, shoot it over, bro, so I yeah, can, so yeah. can peep it. And to it. anybody that's watching, just uh, put um, Ricky Henderson documentary. And um, yes, I sir. think it's from MLB Network. Cool. But, um, yeah, let's uh, let's keep it rolling because we're showing, a, uh, not in a bad way, but we're showing a lot of love to Ricky. We still got a few more things to cover. <laughs> yeah, let's go. This next one is uh, from May 6, 1998. Kerry Wood uh, gives us a, the greatest pitch game of all time, literally. Uh, he gives up one hit and racks up 20 strikeouts to beat the Astros uh, 2-0. Uh, 122 pitches, 84 strikes, 38 balls. One questionable hit. Uh, I don't know if you saw, but I added the I added the video to the 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 outline of the notes. Mm-hmm. It was a it was a grounder to third base, and it went off the third baseman's glove. That should have been an error, bro. Uh, in, in my in my humble opinion, and that was a home game too. So that they. I don't know why they they didn't they didn't, they didn't give the pitcher the benefit of the doubt. Uh, he did hit uh, Craig Biggio, of course. Craig Biggio is an all time second all time, I think, in hit by pitches. Um, so the Astros' record that year, nineteen ninety eight, was one hundred two and sixty. They finished first in the NL Central. Uh, they finished with a OPS plus of one hundred nine as a team, and uh, that led the National League. Uh, and they were third overall in the in the majors that year. So that was no weak lineup, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, that was a that was a crazy uh I wouldn't even say crazy uh lineup, but it was uh oh, and of course I don't have the box score anymore. Uh so it had uh <clears throat> oh it's right here, bro. Gotcha, my bad. Uh, let me read you the lineup real quick, bro. Um, yeah. Craig Biggio, Derek Bell, Jeff Bagwell, Jack Howell, Moises Adu, Dave Clark, Ricky Gutierrez. Uh, he was the one who actually got the hit. Brad Osmus and uh, pitcher Shane Reynolds. So that that was no no slouch of a of a team, bro. Uh, nah. He struck out the side in the first, struck out the first two in the second innings to start off with five in a row. Um, struck out the side in the fifth again. Struck out the side in the seventh and eighth inning. And in the ninth, he struck out the first and last batter of the game. A uh, couple quotes from you, bro, for you. Uh, Bagwell said he never saw a breaking ball like that. Uh, Moises Alou, he said he was a, a, a cocky hitter. He said he he found out who was pitching, usually the day of, while he was stretching out in the outfield, while while Bagwell and Biggio were over there studying the pitchers. And uh, But as soon as, um, uh, as soon as Alou saw him warming up, he was like, Oh shit, uh we're in trouble, guys. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, the 20-year-old rookie, he was a rookie, bro. That was his, actually his fifth game uh started in the majors. Mm. Uh he debuted on 4-12, 1998, and he he actually had gotten roughed up in the in the two 
two starts leading up to this game. So it, it was uh, not to be expected, of course. Um, as a rookie, he went 13 and six with a 340 ERA. Uh, took the NL Rookie of the Year award, striking out 233 batters in 166 and two thirds of an oh, inning, bro. Uh, but he, of course, he didn't pitch in September of that year because of arm problems. And uh, I, I mentioned earlier that it was the greatest uh, pitch game of all time. Uh, I actually didn't know that, bro. Um, but a couple comments in the IG section, uh, they they brought that to my attention. So he, he had a game score of 105. Um, game score is a measurement that was created by Bill James to uh, to show a, an overall performance in a single game, right? Yeah. So the basically, in a nutshell, a game score of 100 is, is like is perfect, right? It's super hard to achieve. And hundred is like the what you want to aim for. Uh, only seven pitchers have gotten a hundred. Uh, Damn. Exactly. So uh, three guys have got one hundred one. Kershaw hit one hundred two, and Scherzer hit one hundred four. But Kerry Wood of one hundred five is is considered the greatest pitch game of all time, bro. Damn, bro, that's a dope. At twenty, set. at twenty years old. So shout out to the guys coming and seeing that. It was a couple of guys in the IG in that on that post. Yeah, I mean, he did have. I, I've seen. Obviously, we've all seen uh, the highlights of that um, of that game. I I also happened to see a a documentary about that game on the nice. Chicago Cubs uh, YouTube. No way. And yeah, bro, it was so cool because. Um, if you look, of, sorry to cut you off, bro. Yeah. Another guy, another guy commented that there's a cool uh, documentary about that. So I, I yeah. didn't know. Yeah, watch it, bro. Cool. I saw it last year, and um, it's cool because it gets you the perspective from everybody about like, oh, you know, it's like baseball, bro. You go to the park, you don't know what you're gonna get. Yeah, exactly. But um, the the moments that stuck to me the most was um, this fan, bro, and obviously because we're fans, um, we can relate the most with them. Um, that he didn't, um, you know, he didn't expect that, bro. And they were like, like, uh, I think diehard fans, are, but this guy, bro, they're that they're interviewing, he comes out on the game multiple times because he's one of those fans, bro. That, uh, uh if you watch the clips, they continue to like throughout the game as the strikeouts pile up, they show these guys that have their shirts off and it's like blistering cold out there. Oh, yeah, and he's yeah, one was, of those, bro. It was a cloudy ass day, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, Oh man, you guys gotta watch that documentary because <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, he was great, man. And it sucks because, like you said, September he didn't pitch, arm problems, and missed the '99 season. Um, yeah, so not good. But. Uh, just, just real quick, bro. So he didn't pitch in '98 of in September '98, but they brought him back then during the postseason in Game Three of the NLDS. Oh, and they they're saying that that he aggravated whatever injury he had. And that's what caused him to miss the 99 season, bro. So that kind of, that's a shitty, yeah, shitty, but shitty I, situation, you know? Yeah, bro. Ah, that's tough. Today that would have happened. He walks, he walks straight into the Hall of Fame, bro, if he doesn't have those arm problems, bro. Yeah, because so now, like, um, from 98 to 04 is when he was his most dominant throughout his career. Um, so from 98 to 04, he won 67 games, pitched in. 164. All of those were starts. 11 complete games, five shutouts, 1,043 innings, 1,209 strikeouts. Damn. Um, uh, 512 walks to all that. Um, a whip of 1.262, and um, obviously anything under 1.3 is a you know it's a great whip. Basically, right. you don't let people get on base. Um, then you flip over 05 to 2012 when like that second half of his career, I guess. Uh, only won 19 games, um, pitched in only 337 innings. Uh, he started, so he got converted to the bullpen after that, which is, you know, it sucks, bro. Because yeah. he probably, like, <clears throat> as a player, as a competitor, you, you're like, nah, like, you know, you want to do your job the way you think you can do it, right? Exactly. I don't know if I'm uh, probably not articulating myself the correct way. Uh, anyway, yeah, you're good. He started 14 games that um, in that span, and he finished 138, uh, 63 saves. Um, 
he still had a very respectable ERA plus of 115 and an ER and his ERA plus in the first half was 118. So not too far off. Just, um, I mean, maybe that arm, you know, it was just, it was never the same, bro, to say the least. It, maybe for that first half, it, he was able to put, you know, keep it together, you know, maybe just years and years of wear and tear. Yeah, bro, it's just a, just a bad situation. Um, de definitely the, probably the best curveball I've ever seen. Mm. Uh, Bugs money type, huh? Exactly, bro. Uh, I'll probably put Clayton Kershaw's right right after that. Kershaw has, yeah, he has a beautiful one, bro. Yeah, bro, but yeah, man, it's just just a, just a shame this guy didn't have didn't get to have the career he was supposed to have. Um, just a couple more nuggets for you, bro. He was the fastest pitcher, fastest starting pitcher to reach 500 strikeouts. Uh, mm. he needed he needed only 404 and two thirds of an inning. Um, he was later later surpassed by you, Darvish, in that stat. Um, he was the fastest pitcher to reach 1,500 strikeouts. Did it in 1,300 innings. Uh, he was later surpassed by Chris Sale. But still, bro, he was uh, he, he was the arm of God right there, bro. Just, just couldn't stay healthy, unfortunately, you know? Yeah, bro. It was just... It sucks. It sucks. Um, so when I was looking through most strikeouts by a rookie, um, I, <laughs> the internet gave me back a list of strikeouts by a rookie hitter so um, i'll share some of those the most strikeouts by a rookie hitter in a single game um is six in eight at bats so obviously Dang. that might have been an extra inning game um and that's by rick reichardt reichardt uh sorry if i'm butchering that if you're out there watching rick <laughs> uh, that was way back in 66 but then after that um the most is five 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 and um players um that are more um, I mean, I guess more common today or whatever, but after that, bro, everybody else is 2018, 2019, 21, 22. Like that's, that's interesting. Yeah, bro. It's like, I mean, that 66 game, bro, he was probably like nervous, I guess. I don't know, but you know what, you know what, bro, now that you bring that up. So back then, like now, nowadays the hitters don't care about the strikeouts. The teams don't care about strikeouts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So back then in 1998, when this happened, like people weren't striking out like how they do now, right? Yeah, that's a good he point. Could, he could have struck out 25 guys in the game, bro. Like, you oh, know, 27. <laughs> <laughs> bro, that's such a good point, bro. Because, um, yeah, I guess on the stat, I don't know, bro. It's stupid, bro. Because I think, like, yeah, on the stat sheet or whatever, it doesn't look valuable, but striking out a hitter, bro, you still requ it requires a lot of, um, a lot of skill, a lot of, yeah, yeah. unless they're just up there swinging at everything, like, like, ooh, like Chris Davis back in the day. <laughs> um, real quick, uh, pitchers with 20 strikeouts in a single game, Max Scherzer, 2016 NL, the National League, Randy Johnson, 2001 in the National League. That game went in 11 innings and he recorded all 20 in the first nine innings of work. Um, but he doesn't, but MLB doesn't recognize Johnson as having tied the nine inning strikeout record, which is kind of stupid. Because it went over, right? Yeah. And then uh, the star of today's show, Kerry Wood, May 6, 1998. And then Roger Clemens twice, 86 and 96 for right. the Boston Red Sox in the American League. But um, yeah, bro. <laughs> one, one, one more stat for you, bro. Yes. Because uh, yes. I, I kind of got my brain going with, when I told you that earlier, he probably had more strikeouts. Nowadays, mm -hmm. he's ninth all time for strikeouts per nine innings with 10.3. And all the pitchers above him are all pitchers that are still pinch pitching right now, uh, except for Randy Johnson. So obviously, all these pitchers that are pitching right now when strikeouts aren't a thing, he'd, he'd probably be number one on that list, bro. Can you name some of those pitchers? Uh, yes, sir. So first, uh, uh, we're going from the top down. We got Chris Sale, Robbie Ray, Jacob DeGrom, Hugh Darvish, Max Scherzer, uh, Randy Johnson is sixth. We got Steven Strasburg, who's uh, probably not even uh, going to pitch again in his life, unfortunately. Uh, Garrett, Garrett Cole, <laughs> number eight. Kerry Wood is nine. And uh, Pedro, the great Pedro Martinez is tenth. Yeah. 
Ah, Robbie yeah. Ray surprises me. Exactly, bro. So if he's yeah, up there, if he's up there, bro, imagine Kerry Wood with the healthy arm, bro. Just, yeah, he'd be he'd be in the league of his own. It would be so cool too to see Kerry Woods <laughs> like the the metrics like from Statcast, you know, the spin oh, rate, yeah, all that bro. crazy shit, you know. Yeah, that curveball, bro. That, yeah, bro. bro. Filthy, 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 filthy. Shout out to Kerry Wood, wherever you are right now. Bro. Oh, yeah, bro. But uh, let's get into the third one because we're we're dragging ass on time wise. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that two that two week uh, two week vacation really really fucked with us, huh? Yeah, so, bro. Uh, <laughs> last well, feature bro, of the week. Uh, real quick, sorry. But, yeah, we had that shit on time, dog. <laughs> going into the, going into the like the hiatus, bro. We were all fucking. Yeah, bro. Fucking. We were, we're getting we're getting into it real good, bro. We're we're yeah. uh, we're flowing, but uh, it's all good. We'll yeah. get back on it. Yeah. So the last feature of the week, we got our our, our boy, the 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 timeless timeless wonder, ageless wonder, Jamie Moyer he becomes the oldest uh, pitcher to throw a shutout on May seventh, two thousand ten. At forty seven years old, Jamie Moyer throws a complete game shutout against the Braves. Uh, the Phillies win seven zero. Uh, previous record holder was Phil Negro, who was 46 uh, when he did it in 1985. And the last shutout Moyer had before this was in 2006. So, <laughs> went a whole four years before throwing complete games, bro. Uh, he throws one, 105 pitches in front of a sellout crowd at Citizens Bank Park. Picked up 5Ks. And he was topping out at a... What, do you want to take a wild guess at, at what kind uh, of mileage he was topping out at? 78. 83, bro. Damn. But uh, he, he could put it where he wanted to, and uh, he was he was getting pitches to swing at off-speed pitches outside the zone, and uh, he 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 was a pitcher, bro. He wasn't just throwing it by guys. Uh, he made his debut in June on June 16th, 1986, at 23 years old, uh, and he tossed his first complete game that year uh, against the Expos. The Expos didn't exist in 2010 anymore. Oh, we didn't exist, bro. <laughs> uh, he became the first and only pitcher to throw a shutout in four decades, bro. Jeez. And uh, I think you mentioned you, you you have some more crazy stats like that you want to get into. Yeah, yeah. Um, just to add to that, what you said, you know, like the Expos didn't exist, or it's just crazy, bro. Because we're talking about a guy that started his career before we were on this earth but um i have a question for you too that i want to ask you right after i run over run, run through some of these um that i got from business insider um when he made his debut ferris bueller's day off came out in theaters the same week Damn. Um, uh, when jamie moyer started pitching in the big leagues 263 current ball players hadn't even been born yet this includes um, the 2011 NL Cy Young winner, who you just spoke about, um, Clayton Kershaw. Sorry, I'm just since I'm, um, the way I'm reading the stat, I just went to look at the article. It was written in right. 2012. Right. Um, and let me just share one more. You got the four decades one. Um, Jamie Moyer has been the oldest player on an opening day roster six different times. So now let me ask you, bro. Um, do you think he would be able to pitch in today's in today's climate? Uh, uh I, I do. I do think so. So I again, okay, yes, I agree with you. Yes, but front offices won't have him. Teams, Jeez. teams wouldn't let him. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. You would have to find a team that'd be willing to give him a chance. Because, like, I even think I even think Bartolo Colon could still pitch nowadays. You know. He's Bro. he's only he's only like forty two I think or forty three I want to say, and yeah, teams and teams aren't giving him a, a chance. Yeah, I'm sorry to cut you off, but um, no, you good. The fact that you bring that up to Cologne, bro. So I'm tripping on. Sorry if you hear any sirens, but um, I'm tripping on the fact, bro, that okay, yeah, a, a pitch, a a hitter, he gets past forty, even thirty five or whatever. I can see, bro, how, like he um may not be able to catch up to the heater, you know, or exactly, yeah. may not be able to bring his hands in quick enough, uh, may not have the strength to muscle a ball through the infield type things. Mm -hmm. But um, pitching is so, like, reliant on uh, deceitfulness as well, you know. And I feel like it is it's it is a taxing um, position, but yeah. it's also one that's filled with, like, like 
like a, a sense of like like grace bro and like softness yeah. to it that yeah. i like you see bro um go i work in like mainly construction sites you see mm -hmm. like some 50 plus year old guys bro like hauling around things and ladders you don't think a 50 year old can stand on the mountain and toss a, like five innings six innings of work especially if, like you said he could put it where he wants bro um i was just tripping on that i was just tripping on that nah, and and exactly because like, i kind of read it a little more about moyer like he took care of his body and he knew what he had to do to prepare himself you know so obviously he, he wasn't out partying you know drinking a 12 pack the night before right he knew what he had to do to to perform so yeah. like he, he he knew he wasn't throwing it by hitters he like he did what he had to do to to be successful and and yeah, bro. Nowadays, if like I, I just saw, I just saw, I think uh, Flank, our boy Flank Thomas, he he sent us a video of a uh, of uh, Salvador Perez hitting a pitch that was over 100 miles per hour for a home run, and it was it was it wasn't even middle middle. It was kind of on the outside part of the plate, but it was a 100, 102 miles per hour, and he still took it to left field, right? So yeah. hitters hitters can catch up to the fastball, bro. And and it go, going back to what you said, like the deceitfulness, you know, here's that here's that 78 mile per hour changeup on the outside corner, bro. Go ahead and try to hit it, you know. <laughs> and if and if we do, you're gonna roll it over to my third baseman, and he's gonna throw you out at first, you know. Yeah. So so yeah, bro. I, I think there's a there's a there's a place for for pitches like that. Yeah, and I say that with the grain of salt. Obviously, it's <clears throat> easier said than done, but um, you know, right with the right arm slot and the right mix of pitches, you can deceive anybody and um real quick like shout out to flank um we'll have you on very soon bro i <laughs> sent my ass back to stockton so you know <laughs> uh, kevin and i have been uh we've been scrambling over here so we'll have you on soon bro shout out to you man yes sir uh, a couple more stats for you bro um i, I think you mentioned this in the the pre pre-show uh, meeting he yeah. when he when he retired he had faced uh, nine percent of all MLB hitters all, all time. <laughs> so by the time he retired, about nineteen thousand different hitters had played in the MLB, and he had faced roughly a thousand seven hundred of them. Uh, he threw more than four thousand innings across twenty five seasons. Uh, he has the most homers allowed in the majors, of course, uh, with five hundred twenty two. <laughs> he is the one that I just I couldn't stop laughing at, bro. In 1986, he faced Greg Nettles. That was he was born in 1944. Oh, in, two, in 2012, he faced uh, Giancarlo Stanton, who was born in 1989. So in, in 1986, he was over here pitching, and and Stan Stan wasn't even a, conceived yet, bro. It's wild, bro. <laughs> another another one, bro. Uh, when Moyer debuted in, in 1986, he he got he picked up the win against Steve Carlton of the Phillies. Mm. Uh, and in Moyer's final game, Aroldis Chapman uh, got a save for the Reds. Uh, Chapman wasn't even born yet when uh, when Moyer debuted. It's uh, crazy. Yeah. Oh, and I I just found another one, bro. Got you. Uh, only six ballparks, only six current ballparks had been built uh, before Moyer, Moyer debuted. Six, Damn, out bro. Of, six out of 30. You want to take a take a uh, I'll, I'll, run, I'll, I'll run through them, bro, because we're, we're oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we got Fenway, <laughs> Wrigley, Dodger Stadium, Angel Stadium, Oakland Coliseum, and Kaufman. Kaufman Stadium. Oh, okay. I don't even know. That's wild, bro. Um, to think about once you said that. Um, a lot of the stadiums are pretty new. Yeah, bro. So yeah, real quick, bro, before we jump out of this one, mm -hmm. do you do you think um Obviously, somebody can probably find it. We can find it if we dig. Do you think you pitched to a dad and a son? Oh, I would have to say yes, bro. Yeah, right. Like, e easily. The, Fielder. the Griffies come to mind. Yeah, yeah. That's that cool. would that that be something to look into. Hey, like, hey, I struck I, out I, both. I, I was gonna say I, I struck out you and your dad, homie. Like, <laughs> it was <laughs> cracking, bro. Your daddy can get it too. Where's he at? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Shout out to Jamie Moyer, bro. Damn, yes, sir, bro. bro. So much respect. Hopefully he's over there playing a Sunday league, throwing throwing uh 
65 mile per hour change of uh, striking dudes out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, bro, let's jump into uh, the current news of this uh, this week. Uh, got got a sad one to lead us off. Uh, Rip uh, Vita Blue, mm-hmm. Oakland all time great. Um, he 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 passed away. I couldn't find the cause of death, but he, he I did read that he was uh, dealing with cancer, dealing with chemo treatments. But I uh, just want to take the time to talk about his achievements in the league. Uh, I don't I don't think he got it. He didn't get the fair. He didn't get a fair uh, the fair treatment that that I think he deserved. Uh, but he became the youngest MVP in uh, history in 1971. Uh, he actually won the A. He actually won the AL Cy Young that year, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, he was a three-time champion, six-time All Star, and he only won one Cy Young award, bro. That was that's that's criminal in my my opinion. Yeah. Uh, finished top seven in Cy Young five times. Uh, at 21 years old, uh, he was he still remains the youngest player to throw a no hitter. Uh, and he also became the first pitcher in history to start the All-Star game for both leagues. For 1971, he started it uh, as a member of the A's and 1978 uh, with the Giants. First pitcher? Yes, sir. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. Um, you want me to share some of the stuff I got, bro? Yes, sir, bro. Yes, sir. Okay, I got you. Um, so this is uh, some cool stuff I learned from the NY Times, uh, an article they wrote about Vita Blue, um, RIP to him. It's always uh, a mission to face him on MLB The Show, although I haven't been, Oof. I haven't played in a minute. But um, yeah, anyway, opposing hitters spoke mystically of how Blue's fastball would ju- would disappear or jump over their bats. Reporters speculated about why he carried two dimes in his pocket when he pitched with some suggesting it was a charm to help him win 20 games. Uh, Across the country, attendance at his outings swelled to levels that stadiums had not seen in years. So he even brought people to the stands, bro. I imagine him today, man. Um, Fans of an opposing team, the Detroit Tigers, chanted outside the clubhouse, we want Vida. Uh, On the field, he was described as a man in a hurry. Unlike almost all other pitchers in baseball history, he ran to and from the mound. His delivery con- uh, concluded with the uh, with uh, his delivery concluded with what writer Roger Angel of the New York Times described as a leap, and his uh, like you said, he wasn't given like that chance. Um, he had uh, a beef with um, Charles O'Finley, the owner of the A's um, back in the day. He offered actually he actually um, O'Finley actually offered Blue two thousand dollars to legally change his name. To Vida True Blue, hoping to use a moniker for advertising. Obviously, Blue declined. Blue was named by his father, who died in in his boyhood. I and, and this is a quote from Blue. I honor him every time the name Vida Blue appears in the headlines, which is incredible. Um, he said, "If Mister If Mister Finley thinks it's such a great name, why doesn't he call himself True O Finley?" Uh, so, shout out to him for taking a shot at him. And last one right here. Before Blue retired, uh, Blue retired before the 1987 season. Afterward, he was a television analyst for the Giants. He was never elected into the Hall, and he suggested it was because um, of his drug use. Um, but you know who doesn't deal with demons? You know people they have their 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 journey through life. And who are we to judge, man? We're just talking baseball here. As exactly. an older man, Blue spoke to a group of high school students. At the prompting of a friend, the Washington Post reported in 01, and this is it right here. Uh, one youth was going through a dark period at home. And um, I'm sure Kevin and I can, uh, you know, relate to that. You know, we didn't have the greatest um, upbringing, but um, yes, shout sir. out to our, our parents for, you know, doing what they could. You know, anyway, um, Blue took him aside and discussed his own struggles while growing up. Both of them ended up crying. I worked my tail off to polish that image back then and renew the name by the blue junior it's a constant battle to do that every day and the reason i wanted to share that last piece is because um he was still impacting people as as recent as 2021 bro so shout out to him may he rest in peace and um we will continue to um not let people forget his legacy man no, uh, yeah, bro. He was he was still a humble dude. I, I read an article that he was still he was still helping the community around the Oakland area, even even up to this past year, bro. 
He was actually in Oakland for their celebration of the 1973 championship team mm. uh, this past month, bro. So he was he was still active in the community and just a humble dude. He I see I saw that I read the quote. He referred to himself as just a guy who threw a baseball. So he 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 didn't he didn't think much of himself, you know. That's so crazy. you know, shout out, shout out to him and his family and uh, yeah. Yeah, man. I, I I know we're we're always quick to throw everybody in the Hall of Fame, but he I think he deserves a spot, bro. He he had probably one of the greatest pitching seasons of all time in 1971, and uh, yeah, man. Just R.I.P. to to Vita Blue. Yeah, and you have been inaugurated into the OTD Hall of Fame. <laughs> yes, sir. Rest, the rest in peace, man. <laughs> yes, sir. So uh, let's jump into the the next section of the the current news. Uh, got some first month's reactions for you, bro. Uh, just want to throw some quick nuggets at you, bro, and and, uh, and we'll, we'll we'll compare notes. Uh, just a couple of things that stand stand out to me as far as standings go. Uh, the Marlins. Leading off with the Marlins, bro. They're eleven and zero in one run games. So usually, yeah, bro. So I usually, what that bullpen's looking like. Go ahead. Usually, usually bad teams find a way to to lose those those one run games, right? That's that's a marker of a bad team and a good team. Yeah. And of and of course now my internet's not bringing up the standings, <laughs> but uh, yeah, bro, that's something I I thought was interesting. Uh, Marlins eleven and eleven and zero in one run games. The Pirates are twenty one and sixteen, uh, leading. I think they're leading the NL Central, but my internet's not working. Uh, they but are, they're two and they're. two and eight, two and eight in the last ten. So it looks like they're coming back down to earth. But they do lead the MLB in stolen bases. Uh, Oakland is actually second in stolen bases. Oh wow. Uh, the Pirates lead the MLB in quality starts with 19. The Rangers lead the MLB in runs per game with 6.37. And uh, the Dodgers are actually 27th in batting average, but they're 22 and 15 in their first place. So that's uh, okay. So they're 12th in OBP and 4th in slugging. So that's how they're doing Ooh. it. <laughs> And of course, the biggest surprise on my end, bro, is the Rays. The Rays. I know we mentioned them when when they started off thirteen and zero, but they're just they're just keeping it going, bro. Uh, they lead they lead the league with a uh, two point nine seven ERA, seven shutouts, and a batting average against of two ten. Uh, they lead lead the home run lead the league with seventy five home runs, and they have the least runs allowed with one oh nine. And uh, I saw an article that mentioned uh, one of another team executive. They said that they could legitimately, legitimately, legitimately win 115 games. Uh, they're they're actually on pace for 133 wins uh, as of last Friday, I think. But obviously, that's not going to happen, right? That's uh, <laughs> that, that'd, be, that'd, that'd be stupid, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um. Go so ahead, just to add a little bit on the Rays, I was reading an article. Um, it was a uh, fantasy baseball related, but they talked about how like something they've been doing different over there in that club is that they um how do you go, bro? It was basically like the only approach they changed this year is um the pitches to swing at. Like there's I don't know if that makes any sense, bro. Basically, it's like so what they're telling the media is like. The only thing they changed, bro, is um, something like so basic that doesn't even make sense. It was like, damn, bro, it's crazy that they're so they lead the league and run differential at one fifteen. Um, mm -hmm. but um, my my biggest surprise is um, let me see right here. My biggest surprise is the the West, the AL West, bro. Um, it's a very tight. Obviously, we're only a month in, but the A's are fifteen games behind, but the Mariners. The Astros, the Angels are only um, – Mariners are 4.5 games back. Um, Astros are 3.5. Angels are three, and the Rangers are leading the pack. All four of those teams have a positive run differential, bro. And um, the only other division that has a uh, more positive run differentials than that is the AL East, which um, – I, I mean, every team is like they're pretty. They have was, good records, was, you know. I was just gonna say the AL East is probably the best division in in the league right now because they're all above yeah. five hundred, right? Yeah, and um, 
I would just say like the biggest, I guess, disappointment, bro, is um the the Cardinals, bro. Like what is uh, what's going on over there, I, bro? I got some, 13 I got some, wins. I got some fucking stats for you, bro, on the Cardinals, bro. Yeah, bro. So um it's cool seeing the <clears throat> pirates up there doing their thing, especially after they lost O'Neill Cruz. But oh, um, yeah. it looks like they got some some juice up there. And um <laughs> I just look at that AL East too, bro, and I just trip out about like how competitive it is. Um, that the Yankees with the let me see right here, twenty-one and seventeen record, they would be in first in the Central. They would be about a game and a half back in the West, only a couple games back in the e- NL East, tied for first, I believe, in the Central, and a few games back in the NL West. But they are eight games back in their own division. So that's crazy. Oh, and shout right? out to yeah. the Orioles, bro. The youngsters are coming through, it looks like. And I'm all for it, bro. It's so dope to see them. Yeah. Uh, although I, I think Gunnar Henderson has been struggling. I know you have him on your team. Yes, sir. Uh, so hopefully he comes around. And I can only imagine, man. Like, I hope the Orioles can keep it going all season. And yeah. Yeah, bro. I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned the Orioles. So that's uh, that's gonna be back to back seasons with their young talent carrying carrying uh, that team and and being successful. Um, but yeah, uh, Henderson's probably just dealing with the you know rookie struggles. You know, mm-hmm. he'll, he'll he'll break out of it. I think he got me like seven points mm-hmm. yesterday. So okay. he's 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 up and down. But uh, yeah, bro. Interesting that you brought that up. So I think the Orioles and and Rays played last week or this week earlier in the week, and they had ten thousand fans in the stadium, bro. They're probably the best two teams in the league, or, or the one of the two best teams in the league. Uh, but yeah, bro. So that and I know I I've mentioned to you that you can't you can't uh you can't lose a division you can't win a division in April and May, but I think the Rays just did, bro. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm afraid to say they they did, and just just to throw another stat at you for the Rays, um, they have a payroll of seventy four million dollars. Uh, you want to take a guess at? At where they rank in the MLB as far as low as low payrolls, they're top five. Well, you want to take a guess? Wait, top five in the lowest paid teams? Yes. So like they're 25th, they're ranked 25th through 30th. Let's, let's do one to three. One is the A's, they have the lowest payroll, right? Oh, so I would say they're like through, uh, or if they're not second, they're third, bro. Because they're, they're third. I know the Indians are in there somewhere too. They're one of the most recent clubs to break the hundred million dollar mark, if I'm not mistaken. They're third. The Rays are, are third with seventy hundred with seventy four million dollar payroll, bro. Are you want to name off those teams real quick? I don't have them. Watching? I don't have them in front of you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. No, but you're good, are you're number, good. number one. <laughs> Damn, bro. But uh, yeah, bro. Let's get into these Cardinals disappointment. Um, they're one in seven in one run games. Going back to the the Marlins stat. Um. 20th team in ERA with 4.48, second most hits allowed uh, behind Oakland, 25th in quality starts. Um, they, everything's just going wrong over there, bro. Remember their the rookie? I don't even remember their, his name anymore. The 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 guy that hit his home run in the in his first. Oh, at-bat. Jordan Walker. Yeah, they ended up sending him down because of struggles. Um, they made they made their catcher the the I don't know what the hell was happening with that. Yeah, why, why bro, they, they just gave him like a six-year deal, no? Yeah, so, okay, now you can't catch anymore. That You're the reason we can't hit. Like, no, bro, that, what does that have to do with anything? But, yeah, bro, they're yeah, all bad in, in St. Louis right now. They yeah. I they are the biggest disappointment, but I got a, so a couple more a couple more uh, disappointing things for you, bro. The Mets, um, I, I had them winning the World Series this year. You did, huh? <laughs> I did, bro. So I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll own up to it, bro. This is uh, fell flat on my face on that one, right? Um, 23rd in ERA with 4.82. Third most home runs allowed. Their last in quality starts with five. Um, the Pirates lead the league, like I mentioned earlier, with 19. So the, the Mets pitching staff has just been you know terrible um they, they've been dealing with injuries suspensions you can't score runs bro i'm tripping on your <laughs> predictions because mine are like that too well when we just start doing these predictions it's going out on a limb bro saying these teams these wild ass teams you know yeah bro like but, i had my world i had my world series uh yankees mets so uh, look look how that's turning out for me right 
Yeah, um, bro. Another disappointing team for you, bro. We got the White Sox. Um, They're always I think- like... They always have like the, this group of talented guys, bro, and it seems like they can't just put it together, bro. Exactly, bro. And, and like I would, I would put them right there with the Cardinals as far as as far as they're disappointing this year, bro. Uh, 29th in ERA, 5.60. Third most hits allowed. Second most home runs allowed. Second most walks allowed. Yeah. Second most runs allowed. Uh, those those games got to be hard to watch for those fans, bro. And topping off my list is Carlos Rodon. Six-year, $162 million, hasn't thrown a pitch. And he has Has chronic... Yeah. Exactly, bro. Chronic, and that's not the good type of chronic, bro. That's uh, (laughs) (laughs) that's, that's chronic back issues, bro. That means he's had it before... And he's gonna have it for the rest of his life. So how about those um those doctors at the Giants uh organization? They sniffed <laughs> out the Korea stuff. They were like, nah, we don't want anything to do with Rodon either, bro. That's crazy, bro. Ah. So there was this other thing too that I read, bro. Mm-hmm. Like the Yankees, like it's like their players are always getting hurt, huh? Like they just always have this laundry list of players that are yeah. just hurt. And and I saw that they changed their like their whole medical staff like two years ago. And and th- this guy is like the best, the best, you know, the, you would hope the best. Up. Exactly. So they went after the best, right? And they even said the articles mentioned that okay, it's gonna take like two years to see the differences or take oh, the change, right? And it, I think it's going on year three. Everybody's still getting injured, bro. That's crazy, bro. So something's going on in that clubhouse for yeah, sure, some, bro. Something's up with the water in the in the Bronx, bro. Stop drinking the water out there, guys. That's crazy, dude. <laughs> But yeah, bro, that, that's that's all I got as far as the uh, first month reactions for you, bro. Oh, actually, Man. one more for you, bro. One more for you. Cody Bellinger. He's ranked number one. Uh, he's ranked number one as far as outfielders go in fantasy baseball. Uh, he's he's already got a war of 2.0. He had a war of 1.2 in 2022. Mm-hmm. He had a negative 1.7 war in 2021. What? He's at, That's he's crazy. At, he's he was hitting 300. He's at 291 right now. Seven home run, 19 RBI. He he's gonna be the comeback player of the year, bro. Yeah, I'm looking at his numbers now, bro. I didn't know he was he's quietly doing it, bro. Cause See, that's the thing that pisses me off too, bro. Like, ah, they need to make baseball more mainstream. But that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. Because yes, sir. I got bothered too by the fact that there was only 10,000 people watching the Orioles and the and the Rays duke it out, bro. It's like <laughs> exactly, bro. Like, damn, bro. It, well, you know, the NBA playoffs are happening, but still, bro. Still, yeah, exactly. Like, damn. Go show some love to, to, to the to greatest great baseball sport being flipped. America's pastime, bro. <laughs> this yeah, is bro, our bro. pastime. Unfortunately, that, that, that ship has sailed, bro. Uh, I know. But, yeah, we're, we're trying, trying, to, trying to revive a dying sport, bro. So, do you want to uh, knock out that last one, or do you want to save it? How are you feeling on time? Uh, I I think we should just cut it Good. off, bro. Because we're already I'll at, at 56. That's perfectly you, fine. You want to just throw it in? We're no, at we can save it. We're we at 56 minutes, bro. Yeah, let's save it. Because that might take another 10, 15 minutes. And yeah. we don't want to hold them up. But, and for anybody that's wondering, it's just we try to keep it a little short uh, in respects to your time. You know, just try to get the episode out. And, you know, just not hold you for too long. Eventually, they will get longer. But... Yeah, we're, we're, we're not trying, trying to we're not trying to make a Titanic movie out of this. We're yeah, you're nah, for, nah. sitting down Event- for three hours. <laughs> yeah, eventually, you know, like when the time permits and you know, like things are happening the way we envision them, we will have longer forms. But um, for now, we just try to stay under an hour. Just at a, we don't want to bore you guys or hold you for too long, you know. So yeah, with that one, we'll just let them go, and we will do that next week. The sparkle. So. Um, yes, sir. Uh, any last thoughts you want to share, bro, before I let everybody go? Um, no, just uh, turn on those post notifications uh, for the Instagram. Head over to those those posts and, uh, you know, comment. The comment sections are popping. So, you know, just fuck with us. Yeah. Um, thank you guys for kicking it. Make sure you like, subscribe, share this video. And um, we put up a, a, a post about Manny Ramirez holding the flag. And there's already people fighting. Please keep it civil. <laughs> My phone has been blowing up this whole podcast. 
Uh, please keep it civil. But if you want to see what's happening in that comment section, <laughs> click the link down below and go check out what the fuss is all about. Uh, so we will let you guys go. We hope you guys have a good, safe weekend. Happy Mother's Day to all your mothers. Yeah, happy Mother's Day weekend, guys. Uh, yeah. I know I know. I speak for for Ricardo and myself. Uh, we were primarily raised by our mothers, so shout out, shout out to them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, enjoy that baseball Mother's Day weekend, this guy, guys. So yeah, until then, we will see you guys next time. Peace.